Hi everyone, it's Simon here. Now in recent weeks we've been looking at customer information and the importance of capturing that. We looked at Wufu as a means for creating forms that enable us to capture that information from customers. And today we're going to look at an example of actually using our customer information uh, through mail merging. Now the aim of today's session. We're going to look at mail merge and understand exactly what it is, specifically mail merge email. We're going to make sure we're really clear about why we would bother doing this. And then we're going to walk through an example of actually creating our first mail merge email. So what is it that we mean when we talk about mail merge? Well, it's really pretty simple. It's nothing more than the creation of multiple documents using two things. Firstly, a template, and secondly, a data source. And that data source could be anything. Typically, it's going to be a spreadsheet, though, which contains information that you've previously captured from customers. Now, the types of documents that you can create with Mail Merge are really broad, but typically they're going to include letters, name tags, and other hard copy documents, and emails. And that's the example we're going to be looking at in this session. So why would we bother going to this extent? Well, firstly, mail merging, when you do it right, can be a massive, massive time saver. So everybody's time poor, uh, and this is an approach that you can use, save yourself a bunch of time. Secondly, it enables us to create really personal uh, communications or really personal emails and letters to send to our customers and other individuals. Thirdly, through using things like segmentation, which I'll talk about later, we can create communications that are really, really relevant for our customers. And finally, when we combine sort of the personal nature of this style of communication uh, plus relevance, then we're uh, giving ourselves a chance to have much greater engagement with the people or the recipients of our communications. Now, in my role at Accelerator, I send a lot of email. I've got a mailing list which has about 5,000 email addresses on it, and I often do a mail merge to that entire list. Now, it's incredible, despite having sent the same email to 5,000 people, how many people respond to me and think that I've written them a personal email just because I have used their first name at the beginning of it. So this can be a really powerful way of engaging with customers in a way that barely takes any time or other resources to administer. Okay, let's dive into this. Let's actually start walking through an example. And once I start doing this, you'll have a much better understanding about what this is and exactly how you can use it in the context of your own businesses and projects. Before we actually start going, I just want to touch on two things. So the first thing is difficulty rating. So many of you might be thinking, mail merge, I don't know what this is. Maybe it's going to be a bit difficult. I want to assure you that the difficult rating of this session is nothing more than easy once you know how, yeah? A really simple thing to do once you've had someone show it to you for the first time. Secondly, the thing is the geek rating. I just want to warn you that this session uh, really is pretty up there. I'm giving it a rating of Microsoft Teams circa 1978, okay? So this is very nerdy. Um, I really want to encourage you, and I'm telling this from you this from personal experience. Um, if you're at a party or some other social engagement and you are trying to curry favor with someone, perhaps do not start talking about mail merging or your love of data. Um, it doesn't get you very far. Okay, so as I said earlier, we're going to be looking at mail merge using the example of sending a mail merged email. Now, we're going to be using the Microsoft Office Suite to do this. Many of you are going to be using Outlook day to day, uh, as well as Microsoft Word and Excel. They're the three pieces of software that we need to do this. But I want to make clear that you can also do this with Gmail. Now, I'm not going to walk through an example of doing this with Gmail in this session, but I will provide a link to a resource at the end of this video that shows you exactly how you can do that. Okay, so when we're doing our mail merge, there are basically going to be four simple steps that we need to go through. The first thing is creating our main document or template, and that's going to be our email. The second thing is creating a data source. The third thing is going to be inserting our merge field, so the way that we want to customize our communication. And the final step is going to be actually merging our data and sending it. Now, I've just sort of annotated those steps there so you can see in more practical terms the way we're going to do that. So our main document is going to be created in Microsoft Word. Our data source, well, we've already done that. Uh, we recently set up a Wufu form. That's been sitting out there in the wilderness capturing client information. We're going to download that and bring that into Excel, and that's going to form our data source. Thirdly, um, inserting the merge field into the main document, that's going to be done in Microsoft Word as well. 
And finally, merging the data with the main document, that's something we'll be doing using Microsoft Word and Outlook. So all of these pieces of software you're really familiar with already. Um, this shouldn't be a troubling process for any of you. Now, a quick note on Mac versus PC here. Yeah, um, I'm recording this on my Mac. Um, I use my a PC at work, and so I've done this process on both machines. Um, it's largely identical. Yeah, so whilst I'm demonstrating this on a Mac, the process is almost identical when you're doing it on a PC. Okay, so let's jump off now and set about creating our main document. Okay, so to start creating our template, the first thing you need to do is open Microsoft Word. We're going to start with a blank document. And there we go. When you open Word, it might look something more like this. Now the first thing we need to do is head to the Mailings tab and select Start Mail Merge. From this list we're going to choose Emails. Okay, so you can see that the views change slightly there, but really it's just giving us a window in which to compose our message. Now just like in any good cooking program, here's one I prepared earlier. Now the text I've just pasted there is a basic message that we're going to send to the people on our list. Now, I haven't bothered drafting a full message, but just enough so you can get the intention of this process. So it can be useful when you're drafting these messages to put some sort of holders in the places that you want to insert data from your list. So in this message, the only data that we want to merge into it is going to be the first name of the person. So that's why I've marked that spot with three X's. So now we've got our text in there. Let's go ahead and save our document. So now we've got our text in there. Let's go ahead and save our document. And for the moment, that's all we have to do. Okay, now that we've created their email template, let's set about uh, downloading our data source. So we're going to jump into Wufu and then bring it into Excel. Okay, so for our data source, that's going to come from Wufu. So go ahead and log back into your own account. So you can see here on the screen, we've got the form that we made in one of the recent videos, our newsletter sign up. So let's have a look at how many entries we've got. Okay, we can see that 12 people have now filled out form and these are the people that are going to be the people that we contact using our mail merged email. So to get this data out of Wufu, we want to go to bulk actions and export. Here we choose Excel and we're going to save that on the desktop. And that's done. Okay, the documents you can see here on the desktop are firstly our Word document and secondly the data we've just downloaded from Wufu. Now there are a couple of changes we need to make to the document before we can use it in our mail mode so let's do those now. So simply open this document in Excel. Okay, so here we can see the 12 people that have filled out our form. The first thing we want to do is to resize the column so we can see all the data. So click the cell between 1 and A and then just double click on one of the uh, edges between the columns. So moving along the, along the top you can see each of the entries is identified with a unique number. We've got our first name, last name, email address, mobile number for those people who have provided it. Um, now this part of the form, the next three columns, is where we wanted people to tell us the kind of information that they wanted to re receive from us. One thing you can see here is that all of these columns have the same heading. And so to make it a bit easier for us to understand, let's change those headers now. Let's just call the first one dot news. And the reason I'm using a dot is just so we know that it's a column that people are telling us it's something that they want to know more about. We'll call this column dot competitions. and we'll call this column dot events. Okay, so the last change we want to make to our data is just to come down here to the sheet name, double click that, and we'll call it subscribers. Click back inside the document, and we'll save it again. Now when you try and save here, you might get this error message from Excel. That's often because the format that Wufu downloads the data in um, is not exactly the same as the format that Excel likes to have it in. So let's go cancel. That will open up a save window 
and down here in the file format you just need to change that to Excel workbook. So we're going to call this document newsletter sign up for merge and save. Now we can go continue and the last thing you do is simply quit Excel. Okay, so now we've got our template ready, we've got our data source ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is start inserting our merge fields into our template document. Okay, we're into the fun part now where we start building our template. So reopen the document that we started earlier, the Word document. Now the first thing we need to do is to link our Excel document, which has all our data in it, to our uh, email template here. So just come up to this button where it says Select Recipients and choose use an existing list. Now we saved our list on the desktop so let's navigate to that and here's our newsletter sign up for merge. Open. Now you might get a pop-up here. Um, we know exactly where this file came from so it's fine to click OK. Now here it's asking us uh, where we want the data to come from. Um, entire workbook or the subscribers tab. Uh, we know that all our data is on the subscribers tab so let's choose that one. Uh, with the cell range we want it to look at the entire worksheet. Okay, the customer information we want to include in our email is uh, the first name and so let's come up to where that's meant to go. Let's delete our X's and we simply come over to this button where it says insert merge field. Click that and you can see now here are the column names um, from our Excel spreadsheet. And so we just want to choose the first one here, name, and you can see it's, uh, you can tell it's a field that it's inserted because it's got these uh, little arrows next to it. Now, that really doesn't make much sense in isolation. You know, we're not really confident that, that that's worked properly. So what we can do is come over here to preview results and it'll show us what the actual message looks like. So that's kind of cool. Um, now, just to make sure it's actually going to change each time it sends the message to a different person, we can test that as well by coming over to these arrows and clicking it and we can see it rotating through the different people on our mailing list. These ones take you to the beginning and the very end of the list. Now let's just say you wanted to include both the first name and the surname for some reason. You can do that really easily. You just put a space in there, come down here and choose last name. And you can see there we've now got the first and last name of the person in our list. If you want to remove a field it's as simple as just backspace and delete. Okay so save our form. Now I'm pleased to be able to tell you that we have built our template and that's all there is to it. Okay, so we've finished adding the merge fields into the main document. It's time to pull the trigger. Well, I guess that means we're now ready to send our email message. Could not be more simple to do this. Simply come over to the right hand side here and click on the button that says finish and merge. Here you've got the option to either edit individual documents, to print documents, this is the option we choose if we were printing out, say, uh, letters that were going to be physically posted to people. But the option we want is to merge to email. So now we have to configure how the email is sent. In the To field, we simply scroll down and select the email address. So that's where we want this e uh, email message to go. Now here we put in the subject. This subject's going to be the same for all people that receive the email. A big thank you. And thirdly, in the send as, it's asking us if we want to send this as text, as an attachment, or as an HTML message. Now, text, that means that the message will be sent in plain text, and so it will not include any formatting. And so if you look at our email a message right now, there is no special formatting in there, such as bold, italics, or underlining, um, or any images. So sending as a simple text message would be fine. If, however, we did have some bold headings or underline, whatever it might be, then we need to make sure we choose HTML message to make sure that that formatting is preserved when we send the email. So let's send it as an HTML message anyway, and we're going to hit Mail Merge to Outbox. It's going to open my Outlook. I'm going to hit Continue. And here I am in the sent folder of my uh, work email, my Outlook, and I can see here the emails that have just been sent as a result of the merge. And so if we click through them, we can see that they've all been personalized with the first name of the recipient. So that's another opportunity for a massive high five. Good work team, uh, mail merging has just been dusted.
So as you can see, in its most basic form, mail merging is not difficult once you know how, but there are some things you can do that can make your mail merging even more effective. And I wanna show you some pro tips now to help you do just that. Now, the first of our pro tips relates to list cleaning. When people are filling out your form, they don't really care about what they're putting in other than the fact that they're filling it out. And so often they won't put a capital letter first. They may well write in all caps or even include things like a Mr. in front of their name or just put their first initial. And so if you go ahead and just use this data as provided, A, it compromises the sort of integrity of your list and B, if you use that data to send out a mail merge, well then it's really going to give it away that the fact you're sending out you know, mass communications to people. If somebody gets an email that says, dear uppercase Simon or dear lowercase Simon or dear Mr. Simon or dear S or dear Simon Boot. And so we wanna make sure that all of the data in our list, particularly our names, are properly capitalized. Now here's an example where I've just modified the data that we got from our Wufu form to show you exactly how it may look in the real world. And so you can see here, scrolling up and down, we've got capitals, we've got lower cases, we've got a Mr. Tom Black, um, and that kind of thing. And so we really don't want that in our list. But fortunately, there's a pretty easy way that we can uh, clean up that data, and I'll show you that very quickly now. So the first thing you want to do is just copy those entries. And then open a Word document. Now what you want to do here is simply go edit and then using this thing called paste special. From here you just choose unformatted text and it gives us a list of names. From here you just go edit, select all. Now there's a really handy shortcut you can use here. If you're using a Mac, you just hold down function shift F3. On a PC it's just shift F3 and you press it and you can change the way that the, the words are capitalized. Yeah, so that's what we want there. Capital first letter, lowercase following letters. We simply copy that again, edit, copy, and we go back to our spreadsheet, and we just repaste the names. And go okay. And you can see now that we've nicely edited the names in our list. Now the one thing we need to be aware of, or anyone that's included, included something like Mr. Uh, and so the best thing there, I suggest, is to highlight the column. And again, with our list of 12, it's really pretty straightforward. But if you've got 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 names in your list, um, then it's going to be a little more time consuming. So what you can simply do is highlight the list of names, go edit and find. So what we want to look for is any cell which has got a space in it. First names typically don't have spaces. And so we know that any cell that does have a space may have a problem. So put one space in there go find and we can see over here it's highlighted this cell with a Mr. Tom and so we just could jump into that cell and correct that entry okay the next thing I want to show you as far as list cleaning goes is seeking out duplicate email addresses and so if you've got the same email address in your list more than once then that person may well receive multiple emails from you which you don't want again it's a little bit spammy and it comes across as the fact that you're just sending out a mass communication the great thing is it's really easy to detect uh, duplicate emails in your list. Simply come over, highlight the list that has the email addresses in it, come over to this option called conditional formatting, choose highlight cell rules, and scroll down to duplicate values. It's asking us how we want to format duplicates, and this red fill with red text is a pretty nice way to show it, so we'll go OK. And you can see there it's showing us that we've got Tom in our list twice now. So, and so let's just delete this entry and now we have no duplicates okay the next of our top tips relates to segmentation now what we mean by segmentation is the ability to carve our mailing list up into subsets or segments now this means that we can really send out communications that are targeted to people with specific interests now, coming back to our original list, we can see that people have given us some insight into what they want to know about. Some have told us that they want to know about news, others competitions, others events, and some of them have given us phone numbers. So let's look at an example of how we can use this in practice. Okay, so we're back at our mail merge example. Now, we're going to use a slightly different email this time. So let's take away what we had, and we're going to paste a new message. Now the message we have in this example is much like the last one except we have a new paragraph where we tell our customers that we want their feedback. 
and we go on to say, we exist for our customers and we'd love to know what you think. We'll give you a call in the coming days to arrange a convenient time to, to chat about how we can improve our service. Is hash 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 the best number to get you on? So let's insert our merge fields. We're going to start by inserting our name and then we're going to come down to here. So this is where we want to insert the mobile phone number we've collected from some of our customers. Let's pop a space in there. Great, so let's sort of click through the message and see what it's going to look like when we send it to our different customers. Now, we've got a problem here because we can see that Lindy hasn't given us a phone number. And so if we sent this email to people on our list that didn't have mobile numbers, it wouldn't make any sense. And so uh, fortunately, we can send it just to the segment of our list that has a mobile number. And the way that we can do that is by using this option called filter recipients. So let's click that. Now, what we want to do here is only send our email to the people on our list that have given us a phone number. So we simply click on mobile number and we say that uh, we want to filter records where the mobile number is not blank. We go OK. Now if we click to the end here, we can see that instead of the 12 people on our list, now this is only going to go to the seven people that have a mobile number with us. And if we click through, then we can see that it's, there's no blanks, it's only going to people that have a mobile number. And again, to send this message, we just go merge to email, we choose email, pop our subject in, choose HTML message and send. Okay, really big pro tip here, avoiding disaster and offline sending. So I just want to show you a quick example. This is an email that I received just two days ago from City Pantry. Now it all looks pretty normal, although you can see here hello contact first name so this is a merge gone wrong uh, they've insert a merge field they've done it incorrectly and it comes across as really unprofessional and really impersonal and so when we're learning how to mail merge um, we want to make sure that we aren't going to make a, you know uh, an important mistake like this and so there are some things we can do to make sure that never happens and the easiest way to do that is by what I call sending offline so if you are going to do an email mail merge uh, for the first time or something which is a you know if you're sending to a really big list and you're just not quite sure about it then before hitting send uh, you can either turn off Wi-Fi if you're using a laptop or unplug your computer from the network and so that means that all the emails will be generated they'll go into Outlook or whatever client you're using but they won't actually send that gives you the opportunity to check them to make sure that they're all personalized everything's formatted properly and once it is, you can then reconnect to your wireless network or plug the network cable in, restart Outlook, and they'll send normally. So it's just a great way of giving you that extra layer of certainty that you've got everything right. Pro tip number four. Uh, now the example I've given here has been using the Microsoft suite. It is possible to merge with Gmail. I'm not going to go through in that session, but I have given you a link to a resource which walks you exactly through the process, step by step, how to do that. And that, people, is the end of this session. Like I said at the outset, mail merging is not hard. Um, once you had someone show you how to do it once, it's really, really easy and it's really, really useful. So I'd encourage you, all of you to try using this as you go forward.